Okay, really quickly before we jump into the video, I created a free printable worksheet that accompanies this video. It is going to help you as we walk through the four marketing principles for your small farm and mine in the next 11 minutes. These are the four original principles of marketing and they apply to whatever business you're starting, whether it's a farm business, a retail business, whatever. So in this video, I am going to be walking you through the four original principles of marketing, how I've applied them to my farm business and how you can apply them to yours. This is actually a 10 minute snippet from the Farm on the Web workshop. It is a monthly workshop where I dive in deeper and give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get your farm on the internet. If you would like to join us for the next Farm on the Web workshop, please click on the link down below for more information. I would absolutely love to help you. It is 30 minutes of intensive education on how to do things like create newsletters for your farm, create websites for your farm, how to use social media for your farm business and more. Plus, it is a time for one-on-one -on -one live chat interaction and encouragement. It also provides accountability so that you actually get those things done and get your farm on the web. Also, during the live chat, somebody asked, how in the world did you go from business marketing to sheep farmer? And I answered that one as well. So stick around for the whole thing. All right, I'm just gonna do a quick re repeat of the four P's, the four original principles of marketing. I ran through this last night really briefly on the small farmer meetup. I'm gonna answer Julie's question. Can you share what you have been doing in the past 10 years um, to get to the point of raising lambs? I don't know if you watched my YouTube channel, but a year ago, against all odds, I felt called to farm. I did it because I had the resources at hand and, and for the past 10 years and really for my whole life, the crux of my business mind and my drive in business has been resource conversion. I think my first business was when I was 13. I converted a bag of my mom's scrap fabric into baby apparel and I began selling it on the internet. It did really well and that actually grew and is still a primary source of income for me right now. So when I looked out my window at 30 acres, I saw an underutilized asset. And not only that, but we were also watching what was happening as a result of the pandemic. And it made me think, okay, I have the resources at hand. We've been eating grass-fed meat for the last 13 years for health reasons. What is holding me back from at least getting into this as a means of providing for my family. Then I picked up Salad Bar Beef by Joel Salatin, and that kind of blew my mind wide open to the principles of regenerative agriculture and the need for people to farm small scale with an emphasis on soil health. And another thing in business that I'm constantly watching for is undervalued assets. And if you, as a business owner, or as an investor can identify an undervalued asset and begin investing in it. That is where your greatest gains will come from. And it's going to sound crazy, but I realized that soil health, soil in general, was one of the most undervalued assets in, is in, in the world, really. I realized that my gains from investing in soil health may not be monetary immediately. But I realized there was something in it worth investing in. So I hope that was clear enough, but that is pretty much exactly how I came to being a sheep farmer from retail marketing and business management. I think in the overall scheme of things, as the year has played out and as time has gone by, I've seen how the Lord has really had maybe a bigger 
reason for it all because people seem to be really responding to my willingness to share what I know of marketing in the farming arena. I was on a call with Joel Salatin. He said, you know, most farmers aren't marketers, so there really could be something here. And so I'm kind of motivated to share what I know from the past 10 years in, in the farming context, because when I jumped into farming, I jumped into it with a very serious business mind. I didn't want it to be a hobby and I didn't want it to be something I would lose money on, even though I'm still at that risky phase in the game where my investments have not started generating a sizable income yet. But because of where I was at in business, I made sure to kind of have a solid outline with respect to at least how I planned to make an, an income from this. I listened to a business, he's kind of a business expert, and one of his mantras is start with the end in mind. If you can't build your plans out in your mind or on a piece of paper, you know, how can you expect to build them out in the real world? I mean, it's kind of a field of dreams situation if you can't at least pencil out how you're going to make something profitable. And so that's kind of what I did in a, in a sort of a way with my farm. I made sure I understood what kind of volume I would need to hit those, those income levels that I had set on the goals. David, most farmers aren't marketers truth. There's a reason we spend a lot of time alone in a field. <laughs> all right, so the four Ps, the four original principles of marketing. These are all true stories, guys. And the four Ps are products, price, place, and promotion. If you can nail down these for any product set that you are planning on selling, anything that you're planning on selling, if you can nail these down, your sales should really follow, you know, in the perfect world thing. But product is nailing down what you're going to sell. Somebody asked earlier what my market was as far as Dorfer Sheep. Well, I have a variety of products I can sell in, the, in that arena. Products being, I can sell the live animal and I can sell the meat pound for pound. So products nail down what you're going to sell. Also, my farm merch kind of plays into the overall diversification. Shop Harmony Farm, stop blog. Um, but you know, what are you going to sell? And I honestly would encourage you guys to think creatively in your diversification. Are you good at wood woodworking? Are you good at leatherworking? And can you do that from a home base? And, you know, as you get your website up and going, like I hope you guys will join me and do next month, um, as you get your website up and going, can you add a diverse array of products that will increase your income streams, you know, in an unconventional, unconventional yet still home-based way? which is I think a lot of people are in farming to have sort of a home based or a more close, you know, sort of opportunity for income. Price is P number two. And that is what am I going to charge? And this is something I could talk all night on this, but what am I going to charge? And in my career, I have had the horrible habit of undercutting myself. Um, something I've really overcome in the last few years, but just make sure that you have combed through all of your expenses when you set your prices and that you have got your expenses down to a T and that you are not undercutting yourself with respect to pricing. Places and where am I going to sell my products? I'm going to build this out as to where I am going to sell my products. So where am I going to sell my products? I'm going to be selling my products at my own website. I'm going to be doing pre-orders for my meat through my website. And I'm also going to be selling it locally. I have a few farmers markets mapped out that I can go to and I'm going to be selling local to friends and family. And I'm going to be selling through Facebook and Instagram, and I'm going to be selling through my newsletter. And that's the neat thing about um, a newsletter list is that you can begin selling your products without having a website, without having a Facebook, you can begin selling your products right there. You can just send out an email that says, hey, I've got half of a steer still available, such and such price. Email me back, send me a check, and the sale is sealed right there. Promotion is the fourth P and it is how am I going to convince people to buy my product? Well, for me personally, promotion is going to be really emphasizing the health benefits of my product, really emphasizing what it did in my life when I made the transition to this quality food several years ago. And I'm also going to be using my videos and imagery from my farm to help them to understand that this purchase, you know, this pound of beef or whatever, it's not just a pound of beef, but they're really investing in a sustainable solution to a crisis that we did see unfold this last year. I know that people are gonna get back to life and people may not care as much as they do right now, but I don't think it's a bad idea to capitalize on the reality that we saw empty grocery stores for months on end last year. I don't think it's a bad idea to 
say, hey, I want myself and my farm to be a solution to that for you and, and making that part of your promotion. So, all right. I think that we are about to round this off, guys. If you do not have any more questions, I have enjoyed this so very much. And I hope that you will be back for next month's Farm on the Web workshop where I teach you how to boot up a very simple but very, very effective website. One of the reasons that I want to encourage you guys to get your website up and going right away is for search engine rankings. So again, we're post 2020 and more and more people are using the internet to find things. More and more people are buying produce on Amazon. So when they go to Google and search grass fed beef in Dallas, Fort Worth, I want Harmony Farms to be number one. And that's what I'm beginning building my website to be. Even though I do not have grass fed beef available for another year, it takes a little while to get those search engine rankings going. So next month, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a simple but effective website so you can begin building out your story there as well as on your newsletter and that you can begin gathering newsletter subscribers from those Google search engine rankings that you got going on.